In my last video, we dove into network protocols, rules that govern how devices communicate over the internet. Today, we are taking a step back to look at the bigger picture, the structure of network themselves, also known as network topology. Understanding this is key for anyone working in IT, network administration, or even just curious about how your devices are connected. Think of network topology like a map of your network. It shows how all the devices such as computers, servers, routers, switches are physically or logically arranged. In my future videos, I'll show you how can you do that all by yourself free of cost. But first, let's understand some basic topologies, each with its strengths and weaknesses. A network topology has two distinct aspects, physical and logical. Physical topology refers to the concrete arrangement of devices and connections within a network. It's the blueprint that guides the installation and configuration of hardware components. Physical topology includes the geometric configurations, such as the shape of the network, be it point-to-point, -point, bus, ring, star, mesh, tree, etc. It also includes connections and interconnections, that is how devices are wired or wirelessly linked together, the physical placement of routers, switches, computers, and other hardware, the type of cable being used, such as copper, fiber, optic, etc., and the network interface cards, which are used in devices to connect to the network. In essence, physical topology is about what you can see and touch. Logical topology, on the other hand, focuses on how data flows within a network, regardless of its physical structure. It is concerned with how data packets travel from one device to another, the routes data takes through the network, the rules governing data transmission, such as TCP, IP, Ethernet, etc., and the logical subdivision within a physical network, often created using VLANs or virtual local area networks. Point-to-point -point is the simplest form, connecting only two devices directly with a single link, cable or wireless. This is common for direct connections between computers or a device like a printer. The most common type of a cable used here is UTP or unshielded twisted pair cable. It consists of multiple pairs of copper wire twisted together to reduce interference. Each end of the UTP cable is fitted with an RJ45 connector, the standard plug that fits into the Ethernet ports on devices like computers and routers. It's the plastic piece with eight metal pins that you see on the end of Ethernet cables. T568A or the more common type T568B is the wiring standard that dictates the specific order in which the colored wires within the UTP cable are connected to the pins on the RJ45 connector, ensuring compatibility and reliable communication between devices. Now, let's shift gears and see what happens when we bring multiple devices together on a single shared line. In a bus topology, all devices are connected to a single cable, known as the backbone or bus. This backbone acts as a shared communication medium and data travels along it in both directions. When a device wants to send data, it broadcasts it onto the bus and all other devices on the network receive the signal. However, only the intended recipient whose address matches the one in the data packet processes the information. A bus topology is cost effective and it utilizes less cable compared to other types. You tend to use a bus topology for small networks because its scalability is pretty low. The main cable has a limited length, which makes it impractical to connect more than a certain number of stations to the main cable. Overall, installation difficulty for the bus topology is average. Moreover, if a drop line or one station becomes corrupted, it doesn't affect the whole network. However, if there is an issue with the main cable, the whole network goes down. Now, while bus topology is not as common as it once was, due to its simplicity and low cost, Bus topology can be suitable for small networks with a limited number of devices like home network, a small office setup, or educational environments to demonstrate basic networking concepts to date straightforward design. Bus topology is half duplex. This means that data can travel in both directions on the bus, but only one direction at a time. A network that works in a half duplex mode is prone to congestion and can be impractical. This type of topology was popular back in the 90s and its maximum speed is 10 megabits per second. A ring topology is similar to a bus network, but it has a circular structure. Each device is linked to two neighbors, one on each side. Data travels around the ring in one direction, passing through each device until it reaches its destination. In fact, in most ring topologies, data travels in a single direction, preventing collisions and simplifying data management. Many ring networks use a token passing scheme. A special data packet called token circulates around the ring. Only the device holding the token can transmit data. 
This ensures orderly communication and prevents multiple devices from trying to send data simultaneously. All devices in the ring topology must be active for the network to function properly. If one device fails, it can break the ring and disrupt communication. Also, adding and removing devices can be tricky. The ring network was popular back in the 90s as well. However, today it's not used because of its fragility and low network speed of 4 to 16 megabits per second. In a dual ring topology, there is a second connection between the nodes in the ring, which enables data transfer in both directions. Data travels in a clockwise and counterclockwise direction and the networks work in a full duplex mode. So if one ring fails, the other one can take over to avoid an interruption in data transmission. In the next video, we'll be looking at some more modern network topologies like star, tree and mesh. We'll be exploring their advantages and disadvantages and discuss how they are used in real world networks. So stay tuned for that.